recently covaxin which is also the, the indigenous vaccine has been given the permission to be administered in age group of 15 to 17 and also it can be used as the booster dose to talk on the vaccine's future its efficacy against omicron and also its role as a booster job and many more things we have the chairman and md of bharat biotech the manufacturer of covaxin dr krishna ella with us sir thank you. welcome to mirror now thank you very much for taking out time so the very first question i straight want to go to you dr ella is on the production what is the quantity of vaccine that you are producing right now and given the demand that is there if you can tell us how much of the production is there right now of your company we are working on 1 billion dose annualized capacity right from the beginning there is little ups and downs I agree but this month we are supplying 5.8 crores doses to the government next month around 6.2 6.3 crores we were also busy with so many clinical trial perfecting lot of issues supplies raw material there's so many issues you know i don't want to tell bore you all those things but i can be assured i mean we can be rest assured and by statement i'm saying nothing less than 5 crores to be supplied from now onwards dr ella i asked you specifically about the production because we are seeing this vaccine is being given to children uh, it is also being given as a precaution dose so in the coming days we are going to see a large demand you have signed mous with the public sector utilities what progress has so far taken place on that front uh, if you can tell us about that two pronged approach aishman one our own capacities will be touching around 6 crores 60 million doses per month number one we also out licensed to india magical hester and two other companies and we are waiting their production to increase okay today If the entire burden is on us only right now. So we are supplying six crores per month for sure. No questions on that. But we are waiting other manufacturers to catch up. Once they catch up, my again will go. But again, we are increasing the capacity is increasing slowly. But it is it's like like a you know pregnant lady. You can't have a in two months a delivery of baby. It's a nine months. Biological system. Some of the platform technologies are inefficient, but the best technologies. best efficient best safety product the best product so it takes time but i can tell rest assured you will not have less than 5.8 crores from this month onwards so the bharat biotech recently claimed that there was some reports of unapproved vaccines being given to children in the age group of 15 to 17 if you could please throw some light on that what actually happened because the company tweeted about it one we are the only one who has shown efficacy in adults number one okay so efficacy we have shown so same dose is given to children also so we expect more or less or higher efficacy than adults also in children because we have published a paper higher immunogenicity in the children and same dose is given so we expect not less than adult dose of efficacy that's number one number two variants we have data published all the way and number 3 the platform technology that we are using is inactivated vaccine child is given all the time in the world injectable polio vaccine or rabies vaccine je vaccine all are given in the national immunization particularly je vaccine and the inactivated polio vaccine both are given in the national immunization program both are inactivated same platform technology so which one you think uh, safer for children dr ella did the company actually inform the government or the health ministry in particular that there was some uh, reports of unapproved vaccines being administered to children i have not talked to the government at all honestly i'm just minding my work i'm minding my science i don't want to go to the ministry and influence and all those things i will never do that okay i'll do the best science leave it to the society to decide Uh, moving on to the next question dr ella uh, it is being said that somewhere it is a vaccine which is based on whole virion uh, based inactivated virus and it can fo- uh, fight any kind of uh, mutated form of virus uh, can it actually fight omicron have you conducted any study what is your assessment how do you see it we have a um, uh, two dose schedule and the booster dose schedule we have sent uh, all the clinical samples 
to US and UK and South Africa and India, all the four countries we supply and we have start getting some data and we're analyzing. But I can tell you one thing, with the booster dose giving a, a very encouraging results against the variant. It is giving a better result. The Delta, uh, even what we anticipated in the efficacy trial last year in April, when the peak of Delta variant in India, that's the time our clinical trial was captured, Delta. So we are getting extremely good results on a Delta consistently. And also, we are Omicron also, we are showing some excellent good results, which will come out in the next two, three days soon. In the public domain. Dr. Ella, the virus is changing and it is mutating fastly. We all know that. Is there a plan in place in terms of research and development that you are pursuing, looking at the nature of the virus, uh, so that the vaccine also evolves in the future as the virus is mutating and it is changing its behavior? Do we have a plan like that at Bharat Biotech? Yes, number one. Number two, uh, Dr. Jacob John who is authority on the pediatric vaccines in the world, is one of the best virologists in the world, okay? He is from CMC Velo, retired. And he told me one thing, we should call Omicron not as anymore SARS-CoV-19. We should be called COVID-21. It's a totally different from the SARS-CoV-19, okay? It's a totally different. We have 35 mutation in RBD region, okay? It's a concern for us. Look at it now. Recently, no monoclonal antibody is working against Omicron. All monoclonal antibody failed on, uh, because there are so much changes in RBD region. So nothing is working against uh, uh, monoclonal antibody also. So we knew that. And uh, what Dr. Jacobs John said is a COVID-21. If that is the case, then we need to think our strategies differently. And we are on the job right now. So, Dr. Ella, one of the most anticipated version of vaccine that is uh, being awaited here is uh, the intranasal vaccine. And in fact, your company has uh, moved to DCGI with an application for its uh, administration as one of the booster dose in both category for the people who have taken co-vaccine co as well as Covishield. Uh, what is the progress that we are seeing in terms of the intranasal vaccine? How far the uh, clinical trials have gone? Actually, you people know more uh, results than us compared to SEC committee meetings, okay? So you have better intelligence. Uh, now, we were trying to figure out a lot of things in the nasal. We, I want to tell you that many nasal vaccines failed in the clinical trial, okay? I want to warn the people, okay? It's not something I have not thought about it. I've thought about it. So we figured out the problem. What, why the others have failed? Why we also got into trouble? But we figured out the science now, and which I don't want to disclose right now. But now we are confident this will make it reality. Our first time in the world, we'll show to the world that how to make it work nasal wax. And um, so we are working in two, we have done two phase two trials. Good. Now, two phase three trials we are doing now. One is uh, a booster dose, whether COVID shield people or Covaxin people given a booster dose at that time of one dose vaccine. And coming to co-vaccine one dose, second dose will be nasal. That also the testing will go on. And uh, so we're doing 5,000 people. I think, I'm not sure, is it three to 5,000 people? Uh, around uh, 5,000 people, we're doing uh, each trial. Uh, it's a big trial. So that's a phase three. So we've done uh, one phase one, two phase two trial, and one, two phase three trial. Just imagine how many clinical trials we're doing. Okay, so I think people should appreciate the type of clinical research we are doing in the world. And, and you are comparing with us to big multinational that puts tremendous pressure on us to prove that, yes, we can also do good science. The only thing Indian media also should believe in Indian science. Uh, Dr. Ella, there is also a criticism that somewhere uh, the vaccine is being administered as precaution dose, but there is not much of study that you have done uh, in terms of booster dose administration, how do you respond to those criticism? I think uh, we are the only company shown in the world booster dose gives you T cell response, long term T cell response. No other company has shown that one. I'm telling you, honestly, watching on this one. Okay. I think you know, people want to criticize because Indian company is easy to criticize and get away. Okay. And I think that's what they're doing. 
Let them do it. I don't care about it. Okay. But what I'm trying to tell is we have shown the IG, IgG response goes down as the time progresses, but not fully zero. But T cell response, we have a response for 400 days. We notice 400 days also the T cell response remains the same. And now, three days back, a publication has come from the Western world saying that T cell is a very important to protect against Omicron or any variants. And this is what I've been talking for the last 18 months, the T cell response is important. That's why we added a new adjuvant into our vaccine to shift from IgG response to T cell response. This I said many TV channels in the right in the beginning of 2021. Okay, I said this is a very critical to have T cell response. When I say Indian scientist says, Nobody wants to take it seriously. When it comes from Western world publication, oh, now everybody's T-cell response. Important. And we are shown, we are the only company shown a booster dose, how the T-cell response protected, how T-cell response, the immunogenicity is increasing, and is stable. And we put it in the public domain already, publication. And if that also they criticize, God only can save them. I think we should send them to some other country to get vaccinated. Dr. Ella, on children vaccination, you have been given the permission to administer the age group of 15 to 17. Uh, your clinical trial involved the children from uh, age group of 2 to 18. Now, uh, the DCGI has given this permission from 15 to 17. Will you be moving to the DCGI for uh, lowering the age bracket in terms of children vaccination? I'm, I'm not here to lobby anything, honestly. I have done... When I started the COVID project, I always look at why we choose in the platform technology, Aishman. We choose in the platform, we know that this virus will not stay with adults. We will go to children. After children, it will go to animals. Okay? We predicted, I predicted that as a virologist. Okay? So, when we develop the vaccine, we choose a platform that can go to adults and child. Okay? So, therefore, we position the platform. We have done a clinical trial, 2 to 18. And that also been put in the public domain for the people to review, okay? And that also done. I am not here to ask the government. It's a government for you. They want to do it 15 to 18 and then 12 to 15. It's a government for you. I don't want to question them. I don't want to insist anything. And I think let, let the process go on. I mean, let the system take over slowly. Let the process go on. Yours is the only vaccine which is currently approved for administration in adolescents. Uh, in Western countries, we have seen reports of uh, case rise in pediatric population. Uh, do you think it is a time that government lowers the uh, bracket of age in children in terms of vaccination, or do we still need large number of uh, uh, real-world data uh, before we do that or the government does that? Government will lower it down after some time. See, it's a good strategy to give 15 to 18, see any adverse reaction, okay? Children are very important. They, it can be, you know, if child gets some, some adverse reaction, mother and grandmothers are not going to keep quiet. Both are going to shout at us. <laughs> okay? So I think, you know, let the process start. Now we'll keep coming down. Okay? That's how we do the clinical trial also. We do adults and then come to teenagers, from teenagers to children, and then come to the infants, newborn babies. That's how we do the trial also. The same process is going on right now. Dr. Ella, as you said, uh, the co-vaccine has been subjected to a lot of criticism. Uh, but what has changed post uh, the World Health Organization's uh, emergency use licensure? Do you think the uh, acceptability of co-vaccine uh, has increased uh, at the global level? Uh, if you can answer that. I just want to tell you, the criticism is within India, not outside. Outside countries are appraising me. Okay, so many countries want to say, why not we have an alternative platform in those countries? They're demanding this vaccine. Okay, so that's a good sign, actually. Okay, it is only Indian who doesn't like Indian signs, who are on piggybacking on something else. They want to always defame India. And they're, they're born only for that purpose. Okay, they've never done science in their life, but they want to criticize others who does the science. That's the nature of some of the people. Okay, and also TV channels like some controversy. You always like, you know, put some sensationalized, all those issues. I'm not bothered. I, what I'm, as a scientist, 
can I do a good science? Can I do credible science? Can I publish in peer-reviewed journals? And what else? You have 21 publications. Ayushman, the All India Institute of Medical Science has published a just JAMA, okay, uh, journal where effectiveness of our vaccine, where healthcare workers who are nurses working in with the COVID patients, okay, they've been vaccinated and looked at it whether they get reinfection because they're working in a COVID uh, in intensive care. Okay, 86% effective. What else you want? Okay, there are other country, vaccine is used three doses over, still getting a disease. So what is the criticism valid in this country? I don't know, honestly. I don't know, should we uh, encourage these sort of things, people in the media? And I think we should ask them the hard questions. And I think, you know, if the public doesn't support Indian science, where do we go? Then I should leave the country and go back to the US and do the science there. So, Dr. Ella, how many uh, countries are you actually in touch with in order to uh, export the vaccines? Uh, do we have a number there? We exported more than 25 countries already, and we are talking to various countries. The process starting, so going on, right? Dr. Ella, coming back to the production part again, uh, what actually went uh, wrong in terms of uh, uh, why didn't the production go as it was anticipated and expected? Uh, you have signed several MOUs with the public sector utilities. Why did uh, production as per expectations didn't go up? What happened there? I don't know why they asked me this question and again and again. These virus needs a BSL-3 containment facility. Okay, number one. People should appreciate that. And we are the only one company in the world has got a BSL-3 containment production facility in the world. BSL-3 containment production facility. BSL-3 labs are there, but not the production facility. We are the only one. And it has to be produced when there was no vaccine. When there was no vaccine, it has to be produced in BSL-3 containment. You understand the limitation of production? Okay? And I think the scientists were criticizing me and I want them to work in BSL-3 containment for one month inside. They should work. Easy to criticize sitting on the TV channels, but they should understand hardship of working in a containment facility, in a BSL-3, and produce a vaccine, which are very tough vaccine to be manufactured. The guys who are criticizing me never produce any vaccine in the world, but they criticize. Dr. Ella, are you ready with uh, the kind of production number that is needed because the demand is going to be huge? We have the precaution doses, we have the doses for children, and we also have the first and second dose, uh, which are already being given to eligible population. So are you ready with that kind of numbers uh, because the demand is going to be high? I think we are really working hard, honestly, Aishman. We are working very hard, and we increase the number of facilities, okay? And right now, we're touching around 70 million in bulk production. We are facing a problem with the filling capacity, okay? So there is each one has got different problems, okay? We're reaching 70, 75 million doses in a bulk production, but we are filling capacity, we are limiting. We are looking at alternative source, how do we fill those vaccines in other places, but we are working, okay? But there's a limitation on that, and I want to say that. But I can tell you honestly, you can't, even if you do 100 million doses, you're not going to vaccinate children within next one month. It's not going to be possible. It has to go down step, systematically go down. You should not vaccinate and then figure out, oh, five years people have got a lot of adverse reactions. That's more dangerous. So it should, what the government is doing, stepping down slowly is the right strategy. And that should be gone systematically. It's just because children are getting vaccinated everybody, and then we figure out a lot of adverse reaction they engage. That is not good. So we keep coming down is the right strategy. Don't worry, we'll have a production. We'll be meeting that requirement. Thank you, Dr. Ella, for your time and speaking to us at Mirror Now.